Hello and welcome back to the FPL Tom YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at my updated draft for game week one. There has been quite a few changes since my initial draft video so I thought I would put another one out there and showcase my best draft at the moment. If you do enjoy the content that you see on the channel please be sure to like, comment and subscribe as I do answer every single question down in the comment section below and we're trying to hit 1,500 subs on the channel. It would be absolutely amazing if we could do that by the end of the month. But that's enough waffle from me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's dive in to today's video. And starting off today's video, we are going to take a look at the back line. In goal, I have gone for Aaron Ramsdale. I think it is a choice between Ramsdale, Gabriel, Saliba, Zinchenko. I feel you do have to have at least one defensive Arsenal asset for me. I have gone with Ramsdale. Like we said, Arsenal have really good fixtures and if you're going for any of these, I think that is a massive plus, especially if Gabriel gets a goal from maybe a set piece or something like that. That could be absolutely huge over people going for Ramsdale like myself. But last year, he was the sixth highest scoring uh, goalkeeper in the game, should I say. And you know what? I think he performed quite well as like a kind of if you hold him throughout the whole season, he's going to just be pretty steady. Arsenal were the second best defence in the league in terms of expected data. So, you know, they're a very good defence. It's a very good goalkeeper to hold. Yes, he is at that 5 million price point. I would maybe look at other 4.5 million goalkeepers. But at that moment in time, it seems a little bit shaky in terms of goalkeeper positionings. Obviously, there is the new Brentford goalkeeper that people are going on about. But it doesn't seem like... David Rea had, kind of has an easy route out of the club now with them setting a 40 million price tag on his head. You know, Manchester United and Spurs were the two main clubs rumoured to be kind of looking at him and now that doesn't seem to be happening with them signing Onana and the goalkeeper from Syria. So that doesn't seem to be happening. So potentially he's still going to be there. You've obviously got the Brighton situation where now they have three quality goalkeepers. Who's going to start there? Absolutely no clues. Pickford, I don't rate. Everton have been in a relegation battle for the past two seasons. And they've sold a lot of players just to kind of balance the books, let people go. What is their defence going to be like? Probably absolutely terrible. And then Leno is a player that I don't actually mind. But again, the fixtures aren't great to start the season. Fulham weren't good in terms of expected goals conceded data, despite finishing so high up the league. So I do think going for a solid goalkeeper choice like Ramsdale that I'm very easy to hold. I don't have to worry about him being dropped or potentially not keeping clean sheets and getting save points. So I think Ramsdale, nice easy pick for me there. Moving on to our other defenders, Estrepinian, second most selected player in the game. And and honestly, there is no, there's no like reason why you know you shouldn't have Estupinian in your team. Good opening three fixtures, standout performer last year for Brighton as well. One goal, seven assists for him, and honestly, absolutely amazing. Obviously, I've spoke about it in other videos and on my live stream, which you can all go check out on the channel, where I spoke about him potentially potentially, and we can hold our fingers crossed for this one, that he might be taking penalties at some point this season. Does on international duty. Obviously, McAllister has now left, so it's a little bit when they get that first one, who is going to be the man. If it's Estupinian at 5 million and an attacking defender, wow, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a great asset on our hands there. The next one is one player that has changed from my original draft, and it is Akanji. He started the most games out of all the Manchester City defenders. 29 games for him last season. No goals, no, one assist, sorry. Obviously, there isn't too much attacking threat with him, but with City's really good start to the season in terms of fixtures, I wanted to get at least two City assets in this team, and I thought Akanji was one of the best defenders defenders in the league last season went miles under the radar when they signed him for absolute pennies from uh, Borussia Dortmund and he's so intelligent on the ball and in terms of his defending as well I think he is just a really solid pick at that price point as well where potentially I could move him to Shaw if things don't work out or if the Manchester City defence doesn't look as good. Moving on to our next defender is Trent Alexander-Arnold obviously everyone's going to have this man if you kind of go in without Mohamed Salah is kind of the route we're going down obviously there are drafts with all three included which I might make for this channel so if you do want to see that leave it in the comments and I will work on something that potentially you could take a look at obviously with Trent two goals eight assists for him last season playing in this new midfield role on set pieces as well always a magnet for points and with his price points being so quite high I think it's 
better to have him in than not to have him in from the start. Because yes, if Liverpool aren't looking good, yes, if Trent's not picking up points, he frees up so much budget that you could easily switch to a cheaper defender and kind of move around with the budget. Where if he's absolutely slapping, starts getting price rises and you've got not got him in your team and kind of had to scramble, sell other assets, downgrade other players to get him in, it's a lot harder to do that. And the final defender is Pedro Porro. This guy has started to receive a little bit of praise amongst the FPL community. 13 starts last season, three goals, three assists, only joined in January he could be absolutely anything very impressive performance towards the back end of the season especially from an FPL kind of statistical standpoint as well with the goals with the assists Spurs don't have the best opening two fixtures with uh, Newcastle and Manchester United not even Newcastle it's Brentford and Manchester United apologies but after that it is a really really good free game spell and that kind of continues and again he's at that price point that 5 million where if it doesn't work out he is easily available to downgrade to a 4.5 or switch out for one of the other five million defenders that was the start of our team and the back line let's move on to the midfield within my updated draft Bruno Fernandes starts our midfield in our updated draft. Now, I've been going on about this man. Obviously, in my ranking of midfielders, I put him in the essential bracket. So if you do want to go check that video out, it will be in the description below. Really good video. We went through every single midfielder, talking about their experiences and kind of what they can offer for your game week one draft. And with Bruno, I went for essential. The man is a joker, 8.5 million. Eight goals, nine assists, but put up some absolutely unreal expected data. Massively underperformed last season. Obviously in a team that is kind of still transitioning, bringing in new players. If they could get a forward as well, I think his numbers will massively, massively accelerate in the assist and potential goal department as well. Okay start to the season for Manchester United in terms of fixtures. That Wolves away game on Monday night, you can see it being a very easy, comfortable 2-0 win for Manchester United. And I think Bruno at times potentially could pose himself as a differential captain with his reliability, with his set pieces and with his penalties as well is a really, really good asset to own from game week one don't hate the idea of Marcus Rashford but I think Bruno Fernandes is a more dependable asset through like the, the long course of the season over Marcus Rashford who has periods of really really good form moving on to our next player and it is Bakayo Saka 50% owned in the game now 14 goals 12 assists for him another player who is on penalties and from this Arsenal kind of um, attacking midfield standpoint I think he is the best one to own obviously you've got Odegaard at the same price then you've got Martinelli and then you've got obviously Trossard Kai Havertz is now part of this but I do think Saka is probably going to pay the most games out of this one obviously sign a new deal as well so he'll be absolutely buzzing to be remaining at Arsenal and with the good fixtures you do expect him to pick up quite heavy wins at the early part of the season you always see that when kind of strongish title contenders they always start really Really, really well battering teams at the start and then it's obviously kind of that period at the end where they're just picking up one two nil three nil wins just these littler tighter games where the pressure is on at the start of the season as we saw last season Arsenal free flowing very attack minded added quality to that team as well so I do expect Bakayo Saka to be a wonderful wonderful asset to own in game week one and beyond Moving on to our next midfielder, and it is a man who I have brought in this team, and you know, it's for good reason as well. It is James Madison, been a long kind of admirer in the FPL community. Whenever Leicester had good fixtures, or this man was popping off, he was always one of the names that people went to, hovered towards, gravitated. Now he is at a top club top club we're putting in quotation marks there in Spurs obviously we're going to see how his new role develops usually I'm not someone who likes to bring in kind of new transfer players or shiny toys I prefer to go for the stable players in my first draft because you know what they're about you know what kind of role they're going to play in a system and you know they're going to actually start games I think Madison is going to start Spurs don't have a 10 and kind of lack that 
in their team, to be honest. They lack a 10 and have done since Christian Eriksen. Have lacked someone who can progress the ball from kind of that defensive midfield and push the ball forward into the attack. They've been very much a counter kind of side over the past few years. I think James Madison will massively change that as well. Also on free kicks and potentially corners as well. Mixing it around with Ped Porro and Perisic is probably what's going to happen throughout the season. So that's always good to have these players that do take set pieces as well. Finishing off our midfield is Matoma, another highly owned player. Seven goals and nine assists for him. Good opening three fixtures. And you know what? I've gone a little bit cold on Matoma. I was quite warm with him to start with, but I found out he's only had one attack in return since game week one, and that was an assist. And if it was any other player, we wouldn't really be like looking at this guy. But I think it is down to the fact that Brighton do have these opening three fixtures. Obviously, we all kind of fell in love with Brighton assets as well last year when we had like the triple up towards the end with so many double game weeks that they did have. But there are so much there is so much more, sorry, competition for places within that side as well this season. You think of the players that they've signed, the players that are kind of all these under 18s that are like from Ecuador as well, who are slowly going to be transitioning magically into the first team. So I don't think Matoma might not stay. I'm thinking Eze as a potential of a pick. Sheffield United in game week one. I think he's a lot more nailed and has that explosive ability as we saw last season and picked up his performances and FPL scores once Roy Hodgson came in. Now he's got the permanent role as well. He could be an excellent asset to own in game week one. That was the midfield of the side. Let me know what you think of it down in the comment section below and let's move on to our forwards and have a run through of the bench. And completing our lineup, of course, of course, this man was going to be in the team. It is Erling Haaland. I imagine he's going to be in absolutely everybody's team come game week one. Burnley away in the opening fixture. You imagine a lot of people are going to be captain him as well. I don't think there's too much we really else need to say on this one. Obviously, there is debate whether or not you'd go for Haaland, Salah, that kind of debate, but. I don't think there really is one, is there, to be honest. Haaland, for me, easy pick in the team. Moving on to the other man who I have selected over, originally, Martinelli, I did have in my first draft, is Gabriel Jesus. 11 goals, 7 assists for him last season. Like we spoke about with Saka and Ramsdale, the opening fixtures for Arsenal are so, so good. And Gabriel Jesus's per 90 stats last season were an absolute joke as well. When he was injured, you could tell there was a little bit of a difference. His link-up play is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully he can start the season as he did last year. Picking up goals, picking up assists would be amazing. Obviously there is a little bit of concern with now Kai Havertz and Ketia potentially Balogun staying as well. Is his minutes a risk? Potentially, but we'll kind of have to wait and see on that one. Personally, I don't think it's going to be an issue. And if it is, I like the price point he's at. He's at 8 million. There's plenty of other good forward assets around that price point as well. Callum Wilson, Watkins and Cuckoo, if he starts the season well, if Kai Havertz is flying as well, you could obviously look to potentially bring him in. So there's lots of other good quality forward options around that price point if Jesus isn't the man or if the fixtures switch. He is at that good, nice rotatory price point, which is what you want with your first draft. You want these players who you can easily dip in and out of if they aren't working or if another player starts to show a bit of form. Moving through the bench, obviously starting off, we do have Ariola, the potential only 4 million goalkeeper who could play this season. Now, West Ham played a friendly last night. Ariola wasn't in the squad at all, but Fabianski did start. So again, it's still not really clear. So I think just to have him on the bench I think he will get some minutes this season especially if Fabianski's form does start to drop he obviously showed in the Europa League campaign what he was about so I definitely think there is a potential that he could play but with Ramsdale I'm very happy to play him week in week out next player is Branthwaite Jared Branthwaite a player I've kind of been hyping up on Twitter and all my videos as well uh, last season for him 28 games in the Eredivisie, 4 million defender. I did speak about him quite a lot in the cheap players to buy for your team. Again, that is on the channel, so go check that out. If you are looking for bench enabler players, it is on the channel, so go check that one out. Yeah, like I was saying, 28 games in the Eredivisie last season. Everton now short of defensive cover with Mina and Cody leaving. Does look like they are going to sign Ashley Young, which potentially limits Brand Folk's minutes as well because he can play fullback. So, you know, there are kind of positive signs 
signs, but we're going to have to just wait and see in pre-season. Who's starting? If he's getting game time, that is a very positive, encouraging sign. But this year, there are so many good other four million options that if in pre-season it doesn't look like he's going to be playing, we can easily search into a Bell, a Bayer, you know, all these Baldock, all these players that are kicking about at that price point. Next player is Umbuemo. Obviously, he's not going to start in this kind of first batch of games, but definitely will be a player that will be coming into the side after game week one. Tottenham at home in game week one, not easy. And with us having two Spurs players, we don't really want a third in that game. But obviously, Tony is now suspended. Umbuemo is going to be taking on penalty responsibilities, and we're not quite sure where he's going to be playing on the left, up front, as part of a front two. There's plenty of variation, but I think for 6.5 million to get one of the key attackers and a penalty taker is massive in terms of the game and finishing up is Woodrow from Luton played a bit last season signed a new contract as well so maybe he's going to be playing some games off the bench again it's that 4.5 million slot it's mainly there if Florian Balogun moves if he moves going to be about 100% ownership so I think that's kind of just a placeholder if he does move for him that was my updated draft for game week one let me know what you think of it down in the comments section below and like I said if you did enjoy any of the content please be sure to like comment and subscribe as we are trying to hit 1500 subs but yeah that's enough from me ladies and gentlemen you've probably had enough enjoy the rest of your day and thank you very much for watching